All right, guys, we are here with an impromptu Marcus Stroman episode. Isaac is coming to you from... Where are you, buddy? Uh, I'm somewhere in the capital region, Albany area, uh, passing through on the highway at the moment. Um, and there you have it. That is our breaking news. This is why we are Bleacher Boys Media. Um, Isaac is coming to us from his car on his drive up after a long day at work. But, you know... oh. Ken Rosenthal tweet. Okay, so now we are here to talk about this Marcus Stroman stuff. Official? Okay, the tweet is Yankees closing in on deal with free agent right-hander Marcus Stroman. Sources tell The Athletic. God. So we can talk as if this is happening and this is official. We will update you guys as any more news comes in, maybe numbers, maybe years. But Stroman, this all kicked off a couple minutes ago with Stroman posting a picture of him photoshopped in a Yankees uniform also a picture of him as a baby wearing Yankees gear so initial reaction buddy um so I just want to say first if I do get pulled over during the episode uh you know please excuse me uh officer sorry I had to podcast Marcus Stroman to the Yankees huge news um, initial reaction channel. yeah you know usually with these things I'm I'm kind of following along on Twitter and, you know, I, I've, I've been kind of a- a- AFK for the last two hours, so I didn't really Clearly, see the a... leading up to it. Oh, John um, Heyman, uh, excuse me. Stroman and Yankees deal agreed to. Uh, did he say numbers? Not yet. Yeah, so, I mean, initial reaction is, like, not exactly what we were hoping. Uh, Luke Weaver and Marcus Stroman is not really, you know, the two guys we were thinking of. Uh, you know, you go back to earlier in the off season, and it was you know Juan Soto priority, and then let's get Yamamoto, eh? and 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 let's get let's get some dudes, let's get some absolute dudes, and we miss on Yamamoto. Okay, fine. Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery. Let's trade for let's trade for Dylan Cease. Let's trade trade for uh, Bieber. You know, let's get, let's get another big gun. We need a two to Garrett Cole. Um, now we're sitting here, and we sign Luke Weaver for two million. Um, Marcus Stroman, who is just seems like the wrong fit for the Yankees in terms of personality wise. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this. I think this is all dependent on the contract. Um, oh, I, I, I more think is coming out. Yeah. Like, I think this it's is all dependent on the deal. contract. Option okay. I don't, ha- I don't hate that. I don't hate that. Okay. Okay. You're starting what to turn was around. I- what, what was I saying before? It was I was I was saying that if they do anything above three four years, it's kind of crazy territory. But okay, two years they give him what? Two years thirty or no more? They got even more. Two years forty, I'm guessing. We'll see in a bit. I guess I don't know. But yeah, I yeah, don't know. It's agreed to. So, yeah, I guess as you said, I mean, this is not exactly what we're looking for. A um, couple guys we got this offseason, Yankees fans, weren't too, like, before the season, I was talking about this before we hopped on, but we recorded our uh, our uh, annual free agent prediction episode, and our boy Ollie predicted, well, he first out, he first came out and said, Stroman to the Yankees. That was his prediction. Me and Isaac scoffed at that thought, at that even the thought of Stroman wearing pinstripes after everything that has happened between the two sides. And an actual we, LOL. An actual, an actual LOL. LOL. We literally laughed out loud. Um, and he, we made him change his answer. And now, now look what happened. So I guess the phrase goes, you can never predict baseball. And it's uh, true in the off season. Um, and uh, we're talking as if, Everyone knows what's happened between the two sides. Isaac was giving me new information that there was some racist talk involved. I I don't know anything about that, so I can't comment on that. Well, but it's not just that. It's his. He specifically was attacking Brian Cashman, the Yankees organization, right. which is like you know the Yankees Both sides were attacking each other. Yeah, like the Yankees don't typically go for players who have bad blood like that. Like, I mean, if we're talking about like clubhouse guys, like. The last couple of clubhouse guys the Yankees have gotten have not worked out too well. Like, Josh Donaldson was supposed to be, like, not a good clubhouse guy. That did not go over very well, right? And, like, right. you know, and then you got Alex Verdugo, who, I mean, I, I, I love when people shit on the Red Sox, but it's not really a great look when you leave an organization to, you know, to go scorched earth on, 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 on your former guys, and especially your coach. 
and right. you know, I heard, I heard, I heard guys talking about Verdugo as as like a guy who doesn't care, who, who doesn't show up on time, who kind of had a "I'm rich, f you guys" kind of attitude. Now, I don't know if that's true if I'm buying into it, but you know, the Yankees are are largely about like a, a developing a culture, like a winning culture, like guys like Posada, Jeter. You know, like these are like culture first guys. Like even like even like Swisher or before him like Brett Gardner, CC Smathia, like there's a heavy focus on culture in the Yankees organization. So it's kind of a little weird how they're going for something like this. Um you know? it's a two year deal, eighteen and a half per year. So that puts okay. it at thirty seven million and an option for a third year. I mean, there is a lot of upside. Like Marcus Stroman has had like what, like one or two bad years, but he's been like honestly like what a top twenty pitcher like a handful of times before top ten. I mean, he was an the early just last year. Yeah, I mean, early on he kind of shit the bed later, but early on in the year, he he was like great, wasn't he? Like great, great. Right. Yeah, he was great, great. I had him on my fantasy team last year, and he was he was really good. Um, but I just don't know, like if. The last couple teams he's left, it's been like bad blood. Like he left the Mets, he shitted on the Mets organization. He left the Cubs, he, he denied a, a player option for like twenty one mil, so he's taking a cut. But right, and then he went scorched earth on on Chicago. So like, I don't I don't know. I think the Yankees are, you know, they there is a big upside to this in which you you get a guy who's a good potential four, all right, three or four, like. Mm-hmm. Middle of the rotation. So, okay, so I guess let's break this down. On the field, strictly pitching on the field, his stuff, what he's done in the past, what he is now, I think it makes a lot of sense. Like, if this was a guy with a different personality, with a different name, I think this makes so much sense for the Yankees. Now, I mean, he's a ground ball pitcher in a, in a, in a hitter's ballpark. Um... He has one of the highest ground ball rates in the league. He's a heavy sinker guy. He shows a lot of emotion on the mound. I mean, these are all things. He's a he's a he's a local kid. He's from Medford, New York, Long Island kid. And I think it makes a lot of sense on the field. Now, as you said, there's obviously a lot of questions with him off the field. I think the Yankees are kind of in the mindset of we're such a strong clubhouse, such a you know, so, like then kind of like Are an they? arrogant Yankee. I, I'm saying this is. I think this is what goes into their thought process that their culture is so strong that we can override Marcus Stroman's craziness. I think that the Yankees in, in this contract, like they're like, okay, you want to be a Yankee or you know, childhood team. This is what you got to do. Get off Twitter because you notice he deleted all those tweets, right? Right. Get mm-hmm. off Twitter. Stop it with the slander. Be a good clubhouse guy. We will sign you. Like maybe some kind of like deal like that, and like. If you go on Twitter and start bashing your teammates, bashing your team or anything, like, deals off. Like, who knows, like, what the intricacies of the contract are, Ollie word. Um, but there could be, like, a whole bunch of stuff in there. Like, we don't want you to have a social media presence. Because, like, think about, like, what Yankee player has, like, a big, outspoken social media presence? Like, Judge is just ads. Rizzo kind of adds. Like, there's no Yankee player that's, like, does a lot of talking on Twitter like other teams. Like, the Yankees, like, don't allow for that kind of thing. So that's... That's right. also why I'm kind of shocked about this. Like Yankees don't like those types of players. And um, you, Josh, Josh Donaldson, you mentioned earlier, he had a huge social media presence. He was going at Garrett Cole about the sticky stuff on Twitter, and as soon as he came to the Yankees, it was silence. So I think they do have some sort of agreement <laughs> before a player joins the team. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I don't know. I, I also, you know, on, on the flip side of this, I don't blame Cashman for not overpaying for Blake Snell. I didn't want Blake Snell either. So, you know, it, it, I, I liked Stroman kind of as a player, but like, were they, did they, did they want to pay 150 mil for, for, for Snell? Like, honestly, no, like, honestly, I'd rather this deal than right, overpaying. Too. Snell. And, then, and then what do you, you don't even know what you're getting. This is two years. Okay. You, you burn 18 mil twice, uh, whatever. So what? But 150 mil is a big commitment to like Blake Snell. Obviously, it, it's so crazy to even say this about a guy that has two Cy Youngs. But you honestly don't know what you're getting from him. And it's the same. It was the same thing with Cody Bellinger. Why I wasn't really sure about Cody Bellinger. And then Jordan Montgomery. I love Jordan Montgomery. His price is so high right now. It's like you're pay, 
Marcus Stroman and Jordan Montgomery, I don't know. I think Jordy, you know, Jordy is or Monty is more, you know, consistent. But Jordan Montgomery is going to get over 100 mil. And so you're basically paying over 100 mil for a three or four starter. Yeah, probably 150. So you're paying 150 for your fourth starter? I'd rather pay 37 for my fourth starter. Like, you know what I mean? So I, I, I guess that kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like once you lost out at Yamamoto, you're, you're, you're kind of screwing yourself over. Right. And, um, I think we should mention that a lot of Yankee fans are probably going to say, okay, it's only 18 mil for next year. Yankees, are they going to get another starter on top of this? And then in that way, if they get, if they go out and say trade for a cease or Bieber, um, they probably like this tra- they they like this signing even more, but I I don't know. Do you think this is it for the rotation? You go Cole, Rodon, Stroman, Nestor, and Schmidt. Uh, Clayton Beater, Luke Weaver, yeah. Like, do you yeah, think this is probably. complete? I mean, it complete in the sense of in the sense of the word, and in, in the sense of what the Yankees the sen- think is complete. Like what in the sense in what? of opening day rotation, Cole. Rodon, Stroman, Nestor, and Schmidt. I mean, you got. I mean, they said. I'm pretty sure they wanted another two pitchers, starting pitchers. Um, right. I, 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 yeah. I mean, this is not. This is not a bad rotation at all. I mean, mm-hmm. this is not a bad rotation. You have you have Garrett Cole. Obviously, you know what you're getting with him. Carlos Rodon is the key to this rotation. I don't. I don't care what anyone says. You know about anything else. If, if Carlos Rodon is anything like he's been on in Chicago years or on the Giants, like this will be the best rotation in the AL if 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 Rodon can channel some of that energy. So honestly I don't mind Stroman as my fourth. Nestor as third. Like that that's I, that's some pretty solid pitching. But it's like two injuries happen. Rodon super injury prone. Um you know I hate to say this but Cole Cole is due for one. I mean he's been so healthy for so long like I don't I don't know. You never know what's going to happen. So you have two injuries in this rotation. All of a sudden, you got, like, Nestor as your one, and then you have Stroman as your two, and Clayton Beater called up. Like, So, I mean, the, there still is a lack of depth here, but, yes, I think this is it. I think this is – I don't think they're going to invest in more starting pitchers than this, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, and I think the more more we uh, give, this t- give this signing some time, I think the more we'll like it because, uh, the, again, the pitcher – He's a guy that's going to give you innings, give you major league innings. You can count on him every fifth day for a solid start, five, six innings, two, three runs. He's, like, he's going to put yourself in a situation to win, and I think that's a, that's a that's an arm that the Yankees needed badly. Like They have a lot of high upside, risky guys. Like Stroman's a solid three to four, you know? Yeah, I mean, we're trying to, we're trying to play a little bit of, you know, positivity, positivity train in here, we're trying to convince our brains this is good. But I mean, it, we're so far off, and and I think we're a new generation of Yankee fan. That's not, you know, we're we're kind of used to this now, right? Like we're we're used to the. Let me just switch, switch lanes real quick. Okay, <laughs> we're kind of used to we're kind of used to the Yankees just playing second fiddle because they can't go out and just buy everyone anymore. Like you know, because that's shown to not to not work. Like if if this is why I think this is upsetting to a lot of like '90s Yankees fans or or previous generations because they're like. Why don't you the, – the best is out there. Go get the best. doesn't matter the price. George would have got the best. But it's like we live in a world where that, that's not the Yankees anymore. And I think our generation is more used to moves like this. So we're now we're trying to do positive spin zone of this where, okay, he's our four. We like that. But, I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm, an, old, I'm an old Yankee fan soul, and I'm like, we missed out on, on a lot of guys. Like there, there, are, there was a lot of – good starting pitching whether through trade or free agency that that we didn't get and mm, but you know what that's true but we like i can't blame the yankees for not like they tried on yamamoto and they offered the money he just you know didn't take it i mean do you think the thing about cole is true and they um, didn't want to do over cole's contract someone who's never thrown a pitch before that's in interesting because that's uh that's a question i i asked you when we recorded a Yamamoto episode, but I don't know. I do. I think it's true. Uh, it's hard to say. I don't know. Like I hope not. Obviously. But like, I don't know. I don't know. I I, I think this is a different. This is 
Yankees are, you know, like everything, everything changes. And this is, this is the types of moves we can expect now. Like, I think you get Stroman on a discount because he wants to come here. Um, right. I he guess took we'll less get... money than he had on the Cubs to come. Like, it shows that he yeah. really wants to be Yankee. Which doesn't make any sense. So it, it, he, so he must be, you know, it's just, it's not a good combination. You have the most thin-skinned player of all time, potentially, mixed in with the toughest, hard-nosed media and buoy fans. Like, what is Marcus Stroman going to say after he lets up four runs, Yankee, stay, Yankee fans boo him, and then what, his post-game interview? Fuck you guys, you're all a bunch of racists. Like, that, like that's just, like a serious thing to consider about, like, Marcus Stroman. Right, but... Uh, so when he went back in 2020... One or 2022, when he said all these things, all these things about Yankees haven't won a World Series since since '09. The only pitcher that's essentially good is Cole. Um, or back and forth, whatever. I think, I truly think that he really wanted to be Yankee at that time, at that deadline. And when Cashman said um, that he wasn't going to be a difference maker, that really hurt his feelings, and that he was just saying those things Ooh-hoo. because he was butt hurt, not because he actually. Well, I don't Not care. You he's still, actually... I mean, but you still put those things out in the pub. Once something's out in the public, it's out. It's not like, like you still can't say those. Things. That's why I'm so right. shocked that Brian Cashman, Brian Cashman, who seems to be another person who's highly sensitive, is is okay with this. That that's another thing. I mean, I guess it's it's all in the name of winning, right? And if if like you know if Marcus Stroman goes out there and and you know has, has a sub four ERA and a decent amount of starts, stays healthy, Yankee fans will love him. So, right. you know, that, that that's the flip flip side of this is is that this can also go very well. Um, yeah, they're like but at that time the, the Yankees did not the, he I don't think he would have fit the rotation. They were saying Jordan Montgomery wasn't uh wasn't a playoff pitcher. So they were just saying he didn't fit the needs of the team at the time. What the Yankees needed then was another ace type pitcher, which Stroman is not. He's never been an ace. So I think I think, you know, as as honest and as brutal as Brian Cash was, he meant more like you're not the eight. We need an ace for Cole. They're talking about Rodon, supposedly, or someone like that. They're, that that's what they're saying. But to get all butthurt about that comment, it's just like, just shows right. the thin skin nature of him and like putting that shit out in the public. Like, come on, man. Like, be, you're a professional athlete. Like, you shouldn't be able to say stuff like that and, and, and get away with it because you think that would burn bridges, but apparently not. <laughs> It's it's gonna be a real interesting uh, press conference both ways for Stroman and Cashman to hear what they have to say because they're obviously gonna be asked about about the past. And I, yeah. I don't know. But the highs, the 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 peaks and the valleys of this con, like what it could be for the highest highs and the lowest lows, like that that's such a huge gap. Is like this with his is attitude this on the mound and with ball? his emotions? Talk okay. So let's say I uh, uh, forget money. Is this more of a gamble than like Blake Snell in terms of like his personality? Like Blake Snell, like money wise in terms of like, what you're getting on the field, and like Marcus Stroman in terms of like personality and what he could say and stuff. Like, is this like equal risk to like you know something like that? It's hard for me to keep the money out because it's such a like if it doesn't go well, oh well, it's only eighteen million. Um, like we were, we we're literally paying Josh Donaldson twenty five million. So, I, like, it's hard to keep the money out. But in terms of risk, I, I'd still even say, even trying to keep the money out, that the risk is lower with the Strowman because of. I just think he's a more consistent. Like you, we can count on him for one hundred thirty to one hundred sixty innings. I don't know that about that with Snell, even though he is his peak is obviously higher than Strowman's. I think as a pitcher, I think Strowman. Like there's more of a chance that Strowman's has a success story in New York than not. And there's also a lot of numbers out there that I saw about Strowman just kind of sucking in Yankee Stadium. But then again, it's it's it was against the Yankees. Like Aaron Judge, but he's I, not going to be facing I, Judge. I, heard, I know, I know. So that's what we're saying. <laughs> that I I was actually heard this on Michael K show. They were saying, well, he's not going to be facing Judge or Soto because I think Judge was one dot sixing him. <laughs> and like out of 30 at bats in his career, you know, going back to his Blue Jays days. And then Juan Soto was like, you know, three for nine off him with like two homers. And Glaber was one dot twoing off of him. Like they're, they're literally this. I guess, I guess if you can't beat him, join him goes the old phrase. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, man. We'll, we'll have to see. Yeah. 
A lot of people on t- Twitter are saying Strowman just can't be the move. Pair him with Snell or Monty. Um, I'm all for it until, but until then, I can't get all that excited over Strowman. I think it is. It's that's it. Like we knowing Cashman. Like, come on. They're gonna spin and it. Dude, Clay like, Beater. Clay Beater is our. We really want to bring him up at some point in the year. If no, but okay, okay. Let's just take the Yankees' thought process out of it. If you were Cashman, if you were if you were running the team and you had money at your disposal. Would you go out and give give Snell a two hundred million dollar contract does, right now? Does he? Would you no, do it? I mean, not. I think Snell. I think. I mean, you lost so much, you know, trade what value. You do with Soto trade. I mean, I don't mm-hmm. know. I, I don't know how much money Steinbrenner has made available to Cashman. Cashman doesn't control the money, so I mean, if money's no object, fuck it. Go sign. Well, right. Go sign say, Montgomery. Say I, 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 I would. I go sign Montgomery. I would go sign Montgomery. He's overpriced right now, but you're, at least you know what you're getting. He's the most. Con- he's one of the most consistent, consistent quality start pitchers in the MLB, and he's and he's gotten better. Mm-hmm. He's gotten thicker. He's gotten better and, and he's thicker. a dog in the playoffs. Uh, I would, and uh, which is I don't I don't honestly Yankees don't even deserve Montgomery from all they talked about how he can't pitch in the playoffs <laughs> and he was one of the best pitchers in the World Series. It's just like, I mean. If, if if there is any justice in the world, like the Yankees would be forced to give Jordy like a hundred fifty million dollars, just and, and just for him, the, just for them to eat that comment mm-hmm. about him not being able to pitch in the postseason, like it's just such yeah. a funny thing. <laughs> God, and he's a completely so different on. look. How how do you think Stroman looks like from like actual pitching perspective? Like he's like he, he's kind good. of a unique look in their rotation too. Yeah, he's 5'8", 60% ground ball, or, yeah, 60% ground ball, uh, super, super, like, bowling ball sinker. Like, I, I I think as a pitcher, we don't have that on our rotation right now. Maybe, like, maybe a Schmidt is what he's trying to be, but I don't know. And, uh, I think we are losing Isaac as he enters into the, into the upper states of New York, into the wilderness of the woods, as he goes skiing, as he's heading to Can go you hear me? skiing at Whiteface next, or this weekend. Um, Can you hear me, Isaac? You still there? Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, oh, there he is. Say bye. Can you hear me? We're we're. I think you're. Uh, we're losing you a little All right. bit. Yeah. yeah All right. I, I gotta you. go. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed listening to this. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We have a lot more to talk about, and we will. We should be back. What next week? Sometime next week, we should be back. All right. Have a good one, boys. Strowman's a yank. <laughs>